Hey guys, we are joined with Atli Marr, the creative director of Dust514, which I think for a lot of people, especially uh, the Giant Bomb, uh, Giant Bomb audience, is going to be their first kind of entry into EVE Online, which puts this, this huge world, this really complex world, a lot of uh, players doing some really dynamic things in a shooter context, which is really new for EVE Online. Yeah. And so, and so how did you guys kind of first approach that of trying to find a way to give people maybe a new audience a window into, into EVE Online? Well, we, we thought about it for quite a while, and we, we uh, explored different uh, genres. We even talked about RTS, you know, uh, porting EVE onto consoles and stuff like that, but we kept coming back to the first-person shooter. It just lends, its well, lends itself well onto, you know, this kind of, this kind of experience that we needed in the, in the EVE universe. And of course, we hadn't been doing much with the planets, and, you know, <clears throat> so we started building Dust. So there are something like 50,000 planets, right, in the EVE Online universe. And when you play EVE Online, you're not actually interacting with those planets. You can see this sort of stats, but in Dust, you're going to be going down to those planets. So how are you guys even building out the content to fill all 50,000 planets? Because that seems like that would be difficult to do 50,000 handcrafted planets. Yeah, so um, we have some interaction in EVE uh, through planetary interaction um, uh, currently. But yeah, so this is the first time they can actually claim sovereignty over planets and stuff like that. So, um, and out of those 56,000 planets, about 3,000 something are, are uh, playable at launch, the temperate planets. Um, and yeah, we seed the universe with a bunch of attributes and, and we assemble the levels in load time and we try to, you know, retain a, a level of verisimilitude. Uh, different, you know, sky color depending on the sun, uh, different texture sets depending on, you know, the terraforming index of the planet or, you know, different other attributes. Um, the uh, structures, the physical urban structures that are present on the, on the, on the battlefield are uh, dependent on either choices that we've made for the NPCs or choices that players make uh, in their own territorial conquest. So, yeah, that's pretty much how we do it. So, I mean, the Burnjita event was this big thing that happened pretty recently. And so I think for a lot of people, Dust represents a chance to maybe participate, be a part of this thing. Because, you know, EVE Online doesn't have just a learning curve. It's, you know, kind of a learning cliff, as, as you put it earlier. So how are players who are, uh, you know, picking up in Dust and shooting around, how are they going to be able to participate with these sort of larger events that occur in, in EVE Online? Well, we this is a sandbox MMO, just like Eve. So we're pretty confident that the players are going to find uh, pretty cool ways of, of, you know, doing those kind of events or collaborating in those kind of events. We're not specifically engineering anything for them to do that, but the openness of the game, uh, the fact that it's, you know, supplies matter, uh, logistics matter, people matter in the game. Uh, we're pretty confident that we're going to see some cool stuff from the goons or, or anyone else. Uh, but it's impossible for us to like anticipate it, you know. Like the Bernjita, I mean, I guess we could have, but it was just so cool <laughs> when it came up, you know. So yeah. What, what have you been surprised by so far? Because I mean, that's the thing with Eve Online is that the players are constantly surprising you guys with what they're capable of doing in the universe. So you guys are running sort of a, 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 a beta test right now, and that's going to be ramping up as we go forward and closer to launch. So what are you surprised by so far? Uh, what the players have been able to kind of exploit, accomplish, and figure out what's possible? Well, there's uh, one recent example uh, down on the show floor. Uh, where some player, uh, it was actually in one of our demos here, uh, some player on the floor had figured out, um, technically an exploit, but he had figured out uh, a certain fit on his dropship that allowed him to armor and shield tank so that he could scrape the ground and basically squash people as he was flying around. I mean, obviously that's not intended, but it's pretty cool that some player in the, at the Sony booth just figured it out, started refitting, and, like developed his own role, <laughs> being like a, a dropship squasher or whatever. You know, and as you were showing uh, the game to me just before, it seems like you guys are building a lot of things so that uh, you want to keep that ramp needs to be a little bit easier for people that are used to playing a shooter that you know kind of want to ease into that. And that, but you've built in a lot of ways that you can make it more complex and hook more into Eve Online as that goes forward. So, how much planning are you guys doing in? Uh, having that in the background so that you know when this does take off you can start incorporating more ways that it connects to EVE Online. Well we have a, a roadmap um, jointly with, with EVE Online, the, de the development team of uh, EVE Online that extends four or five years ahead. Uh, most of the systems are, are pretty scalable. Uh, we'll be able to turn on features that are already there or um, in integrate features that, that are you know inherent part of the system. Um, but yeah, so for example, the planetary conquest in the hands of players, that stuff exists, but we're not going to expose that at day one. We're going to allow the, the, the community to kind of figure out the game and develop social bonds before we turn that on uh, in, a, in an expansion. 
I think that's the, probably the best and the most, uh, the largest example of something that we've actually developed, but we won't turn on until a little bit later. It's also to uh, protect the integrity of the market uh, in dust, so that you know we allow it to mature and we learn what the players want and, and they figure out how to use it before we open the floodgates between the two games. You know, Eve Online is a game that you guys have been supporting for years and years and years, and the, the way you were describing it, the dust is going to be very similar. So what is that roadmap like? Because, you know, most games, it's, hey, you release the game, you support it for a year, and then a year later, there's a sequel. This doesn't seem like the approach you guys are taking with dust. No. Um, well, it's part, we need to uh, interact with our community. We need to hear what they want, and we do that a lot. We have the Fan Fest every year. Uh, we have the CSM and EVE. Uh, the community already, the, the beta community, is giving us fantastic ideas and feedback. Uh, so it's part that. We need to basically build the game for them. Uh, but it's also uh, for us to realize some of our craziest, crazier ideas. For example, we want to add in gladiator modes where you can bet and stuff, or uh, these survival modes where you can fight against bots with your friends and maybe, you know, some Demon Souls-esque aspect, you know, into that. There's, uh, there's uh, on the roadmap, um, things that we know that we have to do, know that we want to do, uh, and other crazy things that we're just, you know, kind of pondering and, and planning for, making sure that we don't paint ourselves into our corners, that we could do it if we decide to. So, and Brandon, our, our executive producer, he actually um, announced, kind of announced at the last FanFest, a few of those things, like mechs. Uh, I would love to be in a mech and I'd rip open, you know, tanks and kill people. So just maybe that might be coming to dust at some yeah. point. <laughs> All right, so you know we're seeing here the show floor, but there's a there's a beta happening. So what you know, what should players be paying attention to, and maybe how can they participate in the beta uh, as as that starts to expand? Well, I mean, focus on the customization, focus on the skill system. Uh, that is really the meat of the game. Uh, it really enhances the first person shooter play, learning how to you know both combine roles with other players, but also to define your own role on the on the battlefield. Um, take a look at the sharpshooter. Uh, people are having a lot of fun down at the floor with a sharpshooter. Actually, much more than we, we uh, hope to you know. Um, but yeah, so in the beta, I would say, you know, just prepare. 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 That's a very ominous tone for, for your beta. All right, so uh, give us the, you know, the spiel. What is, uh, when is Dust coming out uh, platforms? You guys also just announced uh, sort of a Vita hook uh, for the game. So uh, yeah, let us know when uh, players are going to be able to get their hands on uh, Dust. Well, beta players are already playing. We have a big beta event at the end of the month. Uh, and then in a few months, it'll be open for everyone, free, on PlayStation. Are you guys starting to release this year? All right. Well, uh, Altmar, thank you so much for your time. No and uh, yeah, pretty soon it looks, I'm, I, I plan, I'm playing, I'm playing. And uh, yeah, it sounds like, you know, the rest of us will get to join and see uh, kind of what EVE Online is all about. So again, thanks for your time, Altmar, and uh, see you guys later.